Hey everybody, this is Chris with Night of Living Card Games. Today I'm doing something a little different. I'm going away from a Marvel Champions game real quick, and I wanted to show you a game that I have picked up at Gen Con a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to do a little unboxing and show off this game, and then I'm probably going to do some uh, gameplay videos of it. So this game is called Kinfire Chronicles Nightfall by Incredible Dream Studio. So... When I was at Gen Con, I saw this and a friend that I was with was doing some demos of it. So I sat in with a demo and it was a very fun game. Um, it's it's kind of similar to kind of a Gloomhaven, Frosthaven, although crisper, cleaner, shorter, just a lot less grindy. So I really liked it. So first, I mean, if you look at the box, it is a hefty size box. This thing is probably like 10 pounds full of stuff so one of the first things that i really love about this game is so the box itself the top of it just comes on it's connected by magnets this is the play area so the box itself it's got your instructions it's got some tracks on it where you keep some status cards and your maps and everything are going to go out right here it's all connected via magnets onto the box, so everything is nice and compacted. And get into the box here in a second, but I love games that have just amazing um, um, packaging and organization to it. So the start of it, you see Welcome begins your journey through Atios. So this will have some stuff in here, but you can see right here in the box all this beautiful uh, organization in here everything nice and uh, everything nice and compact and everything has its place so putting that aside for a moment taking a look at the first one take this in and we get our map atlas so much like again frost haven and gloom haven type games there is a map for it but unlike those these are contained in a book and as you can see, there's some beautiful artwork on it. And the setup instructions will show you, you know, where to go. And then again, you get your handy box top. You put the map in the middle. And then you put your figures on it. And uh, everything is self-contained there. It's really nice and compact. So you're going to have locations that are going to be... You know, kind of like the more traditional battle maps. You're going to have some that, you know, mazes, some cityscapes. Um, a lot of different things for here. Alright, so in addition to that, we've got, you know, your standard marketing materials talking about it. Um, they do have narration for this on an app. I haven't really looked into that yet, so I did not kickstart this. This is, I believe it's in the fulfillment stage of Kickstarter. Um, they had some copies available at Gen Con, and I think technically I got the last copy that they had at Gen Con, um, the Saturday of Gen Con. So I need to look in this to see because, you know, if there's an app for narration, beautiful. So we've got a rule book, which is just kind of getting started. It talks about the background, the world of Atios, um, little storytellers. It tells you how to set up the various uh, character sheets and the dials and everything. And I believe the, the story behind this is obviously fantasy world, dwarves, elves, other things. And the world was beset by some kind of magical darkness, took away all the lights. And the only thing that could keep it away was some form of magical light called kinfire. And so um, you're trying to get to the bottom of things, save the world, that sort of thing. And so, it's, as it says here, the overview, it's a cooperative game, two to four players. Um, it doesn't have a true solo mode. Uh, which I normally like. So true solo, just one character through it. Um, it's two-handed solo or three-handed solo if you're so inclined. Um, but it looks straightforward enough and everything was nice and compact enough where I wasn't too concerned about that. 
So going into it deeper again, we've got some cardboard pieces, various number tokens. These are dials for health. We've got our some cards here. Uh, some of them are status effects, or in this case, let's see what do we got here. We got armor, which helps with obviously uh, soaking up damage. Exhausted for status, both for monsters and I think for players as well. Hurt. Uh, we've got hurt status. Over in this set, what do we got here? Hate trying to find the uh, the little part that you're supposed to rip open, so we'll just take it from the top. So we've got more statuses here. We've got stunned, we've got weak. Let me get this open, there we go. So we've got stunned, trapped, weak on there. And again, if you look at the box top board, there's places for all these statuses on here, hurt, trapped, armor, exhausted, etc. So again, everything has a nice little place to go on there. Now we've got this bag here. So one interesting thing, like on Gloomhaven and Frosthaven, you've got the action cards with numbers on it and you activate, I think it's lowest number to highest order. So there's a little bit of randomness with other players because you're not supposed to coordinate. So for this one, however, it's based on tokens. So we've got various tokens, some with numbers. Now the numbers are gonna correspond to different enemies and each number will correspond to a different um, action, usually an attack, but there could be three, four actions that an enemy can do. So depending on what you pull out of the bag, oh, five, I go figure out what it is. Um, and then you've got tokens for the various characters that you've got. And then I believe what the rule is, basically there are 12 number tokens for the bad guys, and you need to have 12 hero tokens and you're splitting them up evenly. So in the case of if you're playing two characters, like what I'm probably gonna be doing is two-handed solo. Um, I'll take, there's six tokens for each character. I'll take six of one, I'll take six of the other. And I'll put them in the bag with the enemy tokens. And there are some other ones that you throw in, like these hearts. And I think these are called darkness tokens. You put them in. And then what you're going to do to determine who's going, you just reach in here, pull out a token, and that's how you determine who's going. So in this case, the enemy would activate whatever action is eight. And then when that's done, you'd pull another one. Okay, my character gets to go. And then, oh, the enemy goes again. And you keep doing that there. Once you get to a certain point, you do reset the bag. Uh, so everything goes back in there. Um, that does lead to one potential issue with this game. I did see during the demo, especially with four players. Because with four players, each character is only going to get three action tokens. It is random pull, so you can run into a case of where one player is sitting around for a while. Now, they can still be engaged with the game because there are boost cards that each character can do to help their, their teammates out. But you can get to a point where um, somebody is sitting around for quite a few actions with nothing to do, just, to, just waiting for their turn. Alternatively, again, the random nature of it is that somebody could get like four turns in a row. Um, so we'll see how that plays out in it, but that's that's the biggest thing that I saw with this of uh, potential, I wouldn't even say concern, but um, kind of negative play experience, especially with multiplayer, is somebody could, uh, somebody could be forced to sit around for a while. Uh, also in here, we've got some stands, and again, these are the pips to put together um, 
the dials and things. Uh, so taking a look further in the box, so these six right here are your different characters. So taking a look at one, we've got this one. All your heroes are called Seekers. This is Asha. So Asha of Brillbrook, an expert in stealth, a lone wolf in the shadows. So kind of rogue assassin type thing. Uh, orphaned at a young age, Asha was taken in by the sect, the temple of the sect of the temple and trained to be an assassin. After fleeing the sect, she took to the streets as a thief and eventually joined the Seekers Guild. Although she prefers to do things her own way, she has a soft spot for her team. So Attacks from the Shadow gives a little details on it. She is 29 years old, 5 foot 7 inches tall, and goes by she, they, pronouns, and a special ability. All right, so if we open up the tuck box, we get we get their character uh, character card, we get their action cards, and we get their standee. Now this I have to put together to put the dial for their hit points on there, and you can see so all the the hero the seeker standees they're all made of acrylic, really nice. Um, and another interesting thing that they made sure to point out, I'm not sure how well it will come through on the, uh, on the camera, but they do have a front and a back side of the artwork. Um, a lot of times for standees, especially like the two dimensional ones like this, it's the same on both sides, but they have a front and a back, which is just a neat little touch. And you can see some of the equipment that she carries on it. Um, so in the basic set here, which is what I've got, all the Seekers are going to be acrylic. The enemies in the smaller mission boxes are all going to be cardboard. There is an upgrade box, deluxe upgrade box, that I did not choose to get there that gives you acrylic uh, standees for all the enemies, metal coins. Um, there are player-specific uh, neoprene mats, small mats for them, which... I did buy separately and are currently, I just today as a matter of fact, I got the email saying my order is shipping. So, and then taking a look, we've got the cards with different actions and you can see we've got some boost effects and these are all color based. So um, the colors mean different things. And so you can help somebody with their action as long as your color matches whatever action they're trying to do. Um, there are some cards that are white, which are considered wild. Um, and so it's got various iconography that we'll go over and explain further. And the other kind of neat thing, again, not necessarily huge for the gameplay, but in the deluxe box, they have some alt art cards for these things. You'll notice you've got, you've got the, the hero card there. I, Gen Con, they were giving away some special promo ones. Not of this character, but you just get it, and you just pop it right in there, and you've got an alt art character of it. So, again, not, not anything crucial for the, the game itself, but, I, I mean, I like me some promos, and I think it's kind of a neat way to, to have some alt art in there and it just slides right into this nice little nice little player board and then once you're done in it goes everything just goes right back into its own little tuck box so real quick we're looking at these we've got Asha which is the assassin thief let's see here who else we got here we've got and I apologize if I'm if I'm pronouncing any of these wrong. If anybody from the actual designers look at these, Fane, which is more of a bard, Valora, so is your archer kind of ranger-ish. Well, I'll get these back in there another time. We've got oh, we've got a little bit of a smushed box there, but. Nas, who's kind of like your half-orc uh, barbarian type. We've got Roland, a dwarf magic user. And then we've got Kor, who is a living construct who is made for made from this kinfire 
They have no actual memory of their life before they were turned into this construct. Um, and they're basically the tank. The tank of the group. So get this all back in here. So again, very nice. Uh, very nice that we have all this stuff in a nice big box everything goes into its place and then we also have our various missions they're all numbered 1 through 21 tells us what our quests are the road in this case quest 1 is going to be the road to Vina it's got a little bit of instruction background flavor and it says open the atlas to map 1 read card 1 1 and just like the hero boxes Inside the tuck boxes are all the all the things that you need for it. And the other neat thing is they don't overwhelm you with rules right away. So you will un effectively you'll unlock rule books as you go along. So we had the basic introduction setup. Now in the first one we get rule book two, which talks about how you're gonna do combat. And it'll go over all the rules you need. So that way you don't have to worry about, oh, I've got this, you know, 87 page rule book and it, you know, so much of the stuff isn't going to apply to me right at the start. I just need to know how to get started and get going. So we've got the story cards and the other things. So here's the, uh, here's the monster sheet and you'll notice, so talking about what what the beast is it's a wyvern it's got 30 hit points it focuses on uh because it'll focus on different heroes depending on what their own rules are this one is whoever's got the most health it's always going to be going after that then this one has three different activations on it so in this case what we would do is again we've got taking these out here We would do, I haven't completely read it, but my understanding is basically we, we've got 12 of these. We break these up as closely as we can, as ordered as we can. So in this case, since we've got 12 tokens and three boxes, that means each one is going to get four. And then um, one of these gets the, this extra one. I'll have to look up to see which one it gets. But let's put it on this one. And then again, we would, when it's somebody's turn to activate, we would pull a token. In this case, it's six. We'd find on here, okay, it's six. Oh, okay, so it says the wyvern's massive tail snaps around like a whip, striking anyone within reach. Does four damage. Okay. And that's how we determine that's how we determine what it is and if you've got multiple enemies these are spread out across multiple enemies and then when you take one of the enemies out then their numbers start moving over to the other enemies to make them activate more and then once you're done with this mission you just take everything put it back in the tuck box And then right back into its appropriate slot. There you go. So that is for the most part what it is. Oh, I forgot the last the last box in here. Let me grab this guy. So this last box. The last box has a bunch of different things in it. So we've got some stories. We've got packs for, uh, again, stories and rewards. And again, it tells you, you know, go open up this pack, go open up this. So again, as you're going along, you're finding these things out and you're learning more and more about the the world and the environment you get certain rewards maybe 
It's a gold, you know, gold, silver, bronze. And then a void box. So you get certain special tokens or rewards as you go on. You can cash those in, in this void box, to, to get some advantages out of it. So all this stuff, very nice in this own little extra box. It's kept in there and kind of kept secret. Now, while this, it does have obviously some, I, I guess, secret or, you know, you're going to find stuff out as you go, some surprises. But the nice thing is with six of these different seekers and they all kind of play differently and might interact differently with one another, there still should be some good replayability on this. Even if you've gone through the whole thing, you know, yeah, maybe you've spoiled some surprises or you know what rewards coming up, but... If I'm going with, you know, Roland and if I'm taking Roland and Valora through through the mission, that's all well and good. But maybe now I'm next time I'm gonna take Asha and Core through it, and it's gonna be an entire entirely different experience for me. Even though it's the same monsters or the same story going through it, because these characters their skills, their abilities are different, it's still going to present a different challenge for me, um, different gameplay. So there should be decent replayability. And again, with 21 missions, it should be pretty good to um, get a lot of play out of even just the initial one. So... Again, so that this was my big purchase at Gen Con. I did not do a lot of, I did not do a lot of game purchasing this year. There wasn't a lot I was really looking for, honestly. But I saw this, heard good things about it, and sat through a demo and was very interested in it. So I decided, yep, we're gonna pick this guy up and and give it a try. And so expect to see some gameplay videos on my on my channel here before too long. Um, I'm still obviously going to be doing a whole bunch of Marvel Champions. Um, I got to figure out how to do some Arkham Horror on here, and hopefully next month I will finally be getting my copy of, um, Earthborn Rangers, which I'm super excited for that I'll also be putting out videos of, but I do want to expand a little bit and try some other things, so... Thank you for taking the time. If you looked at this, uh, watch this video of the unboxing of Kinfire Chronicles, um... Like I said, I'll be putting out some gameplay videos as we go along, and hopefully you enjoy it. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. Um, if you want to see more of this, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we will uh, go through this go through this quest campaign together. So I hope you enjoyed this quick look at Kinfire Chronicles and what comes in the box. And I will be doing mission one or quest one soon. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day.